Hello, it's Beach Cam's man and Jack from BAM, and we have a very exciting update today because, well, what's going to be happening tomorrow, Jack? Well, it's the main deck span install for the footbridge, uh, so that will connect the two lift towers together. Um, yeah. There's a bit of work that we've got to do in advance of that, and we're going to take out the shutters that we installed over the weekend, last weekend. Okay, uh, is that seaward side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we poured the walls on where that big cantilever slab sits that we've been talking about. The same as what's on the seaward side at the yeah. moment. Okay, I mean, it's, it's a, quite a tall building that now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll just give you a bit of a run through what we're going to be doing in advance of the weekend. Yeah. Um, bit of a programme, what we're going to be doing over the weekend, where we're going to be building things, etc. And yeah. uh, I'll give you a bit of a show around. Brilliant, let's have a look. Um, so like I just mentioned, we're getting ready for the uh, weekend preparation. So Notice are currently down on site at the moment. They're who we're hiring the crane through at the, min at the uh, minute. Yeah. Um, so the crane that we've got coming in on Saturday night is a 750 tonne crane. That's the biggest one we've had yet, isn't it? It is the biggest one. Um, the, we won't go bigger than that. Um, there's two lifts that are 750 tonne cranes required for, and that is the seaward side um, lift shaft three, yeah. um, which is the one with the cantilever on. That's purely because of the radius that we're lifting that. Yeah, and that's and tomorrow it, as well, is it? Tomorrow as well, yeah. Or that's tonight, a, actually, when this goes out. Yeah, tonight when, <laughs> tonight when this goes out. Saturday so, night. So Saturday night, yeah. So we're, we're hoping to get everything um, planned up and everything prepped in for, for Saturday night. So yeah. the 750 tonne crane's a bit, of a, a bit of a difficult crane to get to site. Um, so the 17... Uh, the 750 tonne crane has an axle load in so each axle so that's a two axle van behind yeah. us over there yeah each axle on the 750 tonne crane stripped down to pretty much its bare bones is 16 and a half tons wow. now when you do an application to move a vehicle of that size you have to notify national highways yeah. sometimes you need police escorts sometimes you need to have escorts front and back of the vehicle yeah so with the 750 tonne crane the National Highways haven't allowed us to move that crane on the highway unless we strip it down to 14 tonnes. So what we're, at, what we're having to actually do with the crane is rather than take off the ballast, you know, like when I talk about the ballast, that, that's basically the big counterweight which goes on the back of yeah. the crane. What we're having to do with the 750 tonne crane is start to actually take moving parts off the crane to deliver wow. it to site. So, big operation then. Yeah, it's a big operation. So there's a 90 tonne crane going up to a yard today where that crane is. It'll strip the parts off the crane because it can't do it itself because it's obviously taken operating parts off it. Yeah. The crane will then transport itself down to here, lower than 14.5 tonnes per axle. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how many axles are on that crane in total. And then the crane will get rebuilt in Dawlish Warren tomorrow. Okay. So we can't rebuild it in here because we don't have enough space to sit the two, <laughs> two cranes next to each other. <laughs> yeah. So we've got to build it up at Dawlish Warren in the daytime. Once we've put it back together, transport it down to site, undertake the lifts, send it back up to Dawlish Warren on Sunday, and then strip the crane down back for transport wow. on Sunday. That's amazing. So the bits that you can see behind us here, um, this is the lifting beam, which is going to be required. So it's yeah. not fully assembled yet. So you can see in the box here, we've got some pretty big lifting <laughs> Look shackles. Look at the size of them. Just to put into context, that's wow. my, my hand on one of those. <laughs> So, so there's some pretty big lifting shackles in there with some pretty big working load limits on them. Yeah. I mean, that, that one, for example, there, these two are 120 tonnes. Wow. Um, this one here is a uh, 35 tonne shackle. Yeah. So different shackles for, for different locations on the lifting beam and there to what you, what, what you connect the pins on to, yeah. actually the, the actual lifting beam itself. So this behind us then is all the wire ropes, which yeah. basically set the angles. So when you're lifting, you need to ensure you're lifting at certain angles uh -huh. on your ropes and on your wires, um, which is all part of the lift plan and all, all part of the approval process of how you lift that piece of precast. And then this, all of these big yellow items that you can see here, they basically bolt together and form the lifting beam. So if, if people can remember, when we were over in Ireland, I was discussing that the lifting, to lift the actual bridge deck, we can't lift it on an angle like no. this. So we have to lift the bridge deck vertically yeah. because we can't put the stresses and the forces into the structure like that. Yeah. So the lifting beam will basically spread over the top of the bridge yeah. and then we'll have some chains which dangle down then which support the bridge deck underneath. And that's what that is. And that's what this is here. Okay. So you can see the two end pieces here, which is where the, the, the plates, the big yellow plates in the box okay, over there yeah. attach onto. And then you've got your lifting accessories underneath big, that. Big then. Meccano set. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> much, yeah. So these... Um, I can't remember how much load these actually take now. Because uh, uh, the, the bridge is 70 tonnes, isn't it? That's the, that's, that's yeah, the, the, the bridge is 70 tonnes itself. And then we've got the timber mats behind us here. They'll be put out in advance of the crane coming into the car park. 
So again, Saturday day, the car park will be closed from about 11 o'clock. Yeah. We close it at 11 o'clock just to make sure we can get all the vehicles out that are left in here throughout the day. Yeah. Oh, 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 well, throughout the morning, sorry. And then out throughout the day, we, we let people um, out the car park. Cool. So you can see in the background now, we have got five out of the six lift shaft sections in. Um, you can see the guys working on the side there. We've got a winch to lower down to the side of the, the lift tower. Yeah. And that's basically how we're getting all the grout up into the into the lift tower okay. to grout all the bars in which connect all of the sections yeah. together. So our last walk around, you just had the first two blocks in, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 So the winch allows us to get the bars and allows us to get the grout up there, which is what Ben's doing over yeah. there. It just saves the manual handle element of carrying it all the way up the scaffold tower, which yeah. is currently inside that lift section there. It's a lot, lot bigger than <laughs> it seems on the camera. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. <laughs> so the third lift shaft section that I talked about is yeah. the one with the cantilever section on. That sits on top of the plant room walls, yeah. which when I've been doing the other tours, I've talked about how we have this construction sequence and how we have to build the walls before we land the deck on top of it there. Yeah. Um, and then the actual deck itself, will sit on that span going out that section over there. This wow. is the final lift shaft section to install on this side. Yeah. Um, this, is the, the, this is slightly different to all the other sections with the fact that it's got a lifting beam inside of it. Yeah. So it's got a 2.5 tonne lifting beam which has been attached to it and that's basically used once you put the lid on, which is over there. Ah. You've, got, you've, got no, you've, got, you've got no way of actually lifting things in and out of the tower once you put the lid on. Okay. And the lift supplier won't start the install of the lift until the lid is on because of, because of all the mechanicals and all right. the electricals yeah, that yeah, go yeah, into yeah. it. So this section goes on. We're planning, we're planning on doing this this weekend if we do have a little, enough time. Yeah. Um, that'll get grouted in position. Lifted beam goes in with it. And then that allows us to lift the lift elements through that door there. So okay. all the lift is going to be fed in through the door. Through the bottom. Yeah. And then it'll all just be lifted up. You can see the winch in the background there now, just taking some of the bars up, ready to go in. And then the plant room walls, they're going to be capped off with the staircases, which are currently still over in Ireland at the minute. We've been prioritising getting the deck, the, the, the cantilever sections in and the deck in because it releases a lot more work for okay. us. Okay. Um, again, all part of the construction sequence. So th this bit here, was it? This was the bit on the table that they were put, having all the reinforcements in in Ireland when that, we, on, on that film. If, if you've not seen it, you can click, click a, a link in the description. That's it, yeah. So I think last time we were here, the, the sh all the shuttering work the was still up were around here, this one, yeah. yeah. Um, but this will basically house all the kind of mechanical and electrical equipment inside here. Um, and that, will, that, that little nib on the top there is where the two different stairs, the yeah. precast sections of stairs meet each other. All the holes that you can see in, on, on here are where we've had the tie bars which hold the shutters together. So these, these caps pull out on the end. Um, and then once you pull them out on the end, you plug them and then you finish off all the structure yeah. and then give it a, a nice kind of smooth over concrete finish. The ducts, you can see the ducts which come in into oh, the, yeah. into the, the um, plant room here. So this will be closed off with a doorway. Yeah. Um, and then as you come down through this section here, the ducts come out of the wall and then they go into the lift tower base and then they'll come out the bottom of the, uh, of the lift tower on the other side over there then. And then we'll, there's, there's holes preformed and everything to start take, taking cables into control panels, which you can see we yeah, yeah. talked about before. So Josh is just working away in the background now, um, finishing off the grouting of the bars and connecting all the last of the bars up and then putting all the, the, uh, the universal columns in the pockets ready for lifting lift shaft tower six on top this weekend. Yeah. Um, the little kind of bit of polystyrene that you can see going around the edge there, that gets stuck down to the actual precast unit. And um, the idea of that is when we land the next section on top, it creates a seal between the two. So when we grout the unit, the next unit from the top, all the grout doesn't leak out the sides. Okay. Um, that's the last thing we want really is a grout and, yes. and cleaning up exercise on our hands. Well, so, we're, we're, we're quite high, aren't we? So we are pretty, <laughs> pretty high now. Um, you can't. It's, you're not actually. We're not actually going to go any any higher than this, really, no. with the scaffolding, because this has to be shortened down to get that small last, last okay. section in. Yeah. So this is about as high as the scaffolding will go. Um, and obviously, from as a member of the public, nobody will ever really be able never to been come this up, high. No. Nobody, nobody will ever be able to come up here because I'll come up straight out onto the um, the deck down below and then walk across the footbridge over there. Okay. So on the opposite side, um, you can see that we've progressed 
almost to the end now with the block install. There is, uh, I think there is three three more blocks for the shield wall to install. Uh -huh. um, two of which are at the top, one yeah. of which is at the bottom where Luke's just walking through now. Yeah. Um, on the opposite side, you can see the shutters that we lifted in last weekend. We poured those walls on Wednesday this week. Now the walls have to, have to get to a certain strength before we can load them with the cantilever. Yeah. So we have to do, we, we, we take test, we take samples of the concrete and we put them into concrete cubes. Yeah. And we send the concrete cubes to a laboratory. And what the laboratory does is um, um, put it in like a big compression testing kit. Yeah. And measures the compression force it takes until the cube cracks. Right, okay. Um, and that gives you your cube strength then, and we, which is how we kind of work all the temp, the temping work side and of things. They let you know you're good to go then. That's it, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the lift shaft three is going to get landed on this weekend. Lift shaft three sh sits on that bit of a gap in the shield wall where the, where, where the one block steps in a little bit. Yeah. And then it lands on top of the, the plant room wall. So the first operation on Saturday night is going to be taking those shutters out. Yeah. Which is probably going to take us about an hour in total to get everything out. Um, once those shutters are stripped out, We'll then begin installing cantilever three. Yeah. Once cantilever three is in, we will land the deck between the two then. Okay. So all being well, by five, six o'clock, Sunday morning, um, everything should be should be kind of in between the two platforms. Brilliant. We'll have a new structure between the two. And well, I look forward to being here. So we'll, we will be covering this um, and you'll be able to watch it live on Seabreeze as well. Yeah. Um, over the last week, the lads have been working back in the platform, so there was a gap between the drainage channel and the um, cladding, which they've been infilling all the way down. Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah, that um, so, good. The, so there was a bit of a, a bit of a gap to finish off there, um, and then we got the team on the right hand side over there um, where Luke is. He's just starting the cladding on the L units, which oh, yeah. come down the back of the wall there. So, oh great! So they're getting a bit of a finish. Oh, that's looking good. In terms of resurface in this area, obviously it's still it's still very much a construction site at the moment. Yeah. Um, so when we have finished this work, we are cutting back the extent of this on either side of where the footbridge is, and all of this will get resurfaced in here to to, to put the to put the footbridge uh, back into the correct gradients and falls. Okay. Um, wow. It's a lot of work. A lot of work still left to do in this area. The main structure structure itself, um, you know, come come the back end uh, come the back end of June. Um, start of July, we're not going to be a million miles away with the, the vast majority of the precast installation. Yeah. Um, maybe a, a week or two into July just to finish everything off. So, so Saturday is, is just is the big bits now and it's going to be sort of small yeah, bits after th that's then, is it? it? And we can reduce the crane size back down then. So the main, yeah. main priority for me this weekend is making sure that that cantilever and that deck goes in. Yeah. Because without the cantilever and the deck going in, I still need that 750 ton crane and it's an expensive operation rigging and de-rigging a crane like yeah, we're doing yeah. and bringing it down here. Sounds it. And you're having to pay for two cranes to rebuild it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. So we'll nip around the other side and we'll have a jump around the other side. I'll just show you what we've been doing down there. Um, Brilliant. So span A is pretty much now complete up to the top of the ramp. Um, the only thing that we've got left to do there is to reinstate the footpath now. So we need to reinstate the footpath with the same um, same surface in as what came out. Yeah. Um, when we took that surfacing out, it was just beyond repair of, of keeping it really. So it was all it was all removed off site, um, and we've got some to colour match it, which is being delivered to site within the next week or two, I believe. Okay. Um, and that will basically finish off the site entrance and allow access back under span A. Then. Yeah. Um, obviously, as you come back underneath here, then uh, we've got the everything which will open back up to the public. Um, we we'll enjoying it. Been, been down here that much since the um, since the opening day. Yeah. In. in uh, on the 25th of May. It's been a good day, big day yeah, that was. A big day, great day. A lot of people turned up, so thanks to everyone who did turn up. Yeah. You know, it was really, really well received by all the lads. The lads were kind of quite proud of, of everyone looking at what they'd done, asking questions. Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's a great day. Lovely day. So there's a build up of sand in the basin at the moment. Um, now, through, all throughout last week and the week before, we were in Eastleys. Yeah. And when you have an Eastleys storm down here, it basically pushes and migrates all the sand from the top end of the beach down right the way down Red Rock up there yeah. and it pushes all the sand down into this corner here. Um, so it was a lot fuller than this last week, the tide's just been washing it out over the last couple of days. Yeah, it has, yeah. Um, but you are, you will get sand build-up in this corner still um, yeah. and, and sand build-up existed before we, we started any of these works here. So sometimes you would walk underneath here and the old still in basin area would be completely full. Absolutely. You wouldn't see the front wall. No. Because no. it would be underneath sand. Um, so 
you, you know, you can't really remove that problem unless you build another breakwater out at sea. But what this channel is designed to do is to be self-cleansing. Yeah. So it's self-cleansing when it reaches a certain capacity. Yeah. And when there's a certain amount of rainfall. So at the minute, we've been in this extremely dry period. We've had very, we've had little rainfall. Yeah. Um, so it's only clearing a small section on the side of this channel at the year at the minute. But we've seen this channel when there's been rainfall upstream, probably three or four hundred mil deep, right the way across. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and there's been load, loads of footage of it. So we have seen an experienced build-up of sand like this in the basin area prior to us opening. People just haven't been able to see it yeah, as, as, yeah, we've, yeah. as we've been well, obviously you, building the project. It's, you've, it's been tested many times, has it? Like yeah, yeah. So, so it just basically flushes the whole channel out there. Yeah. So weirs are designed to hold water. Yeah. Um, and it's basically so that rivers don't dry out in periods of low, low rainfall. So if you can imagine now, if this was just a constant gradient down, there would be no water, there'd be very little water in there. It'd be hard for kind of all, all the, the black swans and yeah. things like that to actually, to actually live in and, and, and sustain a life in this, this uh, river running through here. Yeah. So the weir is designed, each level is designed to hold a certain capacity. Yeah. So for it to flood from downstream, the lower level must exceed the level of the weir above. Yeah. So unless you get periods of heavy really heavy rainfall which the river is struggling to manage it, it, itself and, the, yeah. it, and, it, and is obviously struggling to go out to sea which it has been known for flooding in the past uh -huh. Dawlish water has um you won't actually get flooding from downstream unless the lower level increases above that first level of that weir yeah, yeah 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 because there's still always capacity for the river uh, yeah. for, the, for the water to overflow the top of the absolutely yeah of, over the, overflow the top of the weir and go out to sea then yeah, and there's, a, there's also floodgates within these weirs, aren't they? So I know that the Don and the guys, if, if there is heavy, heavy rain up top, they can open certain floodgates depending on what birds are nesting, etc. Yes, that's it. So you can see that so they, they've got two of them there, yeah. right and then there's a few more upstream as well, and that allows the water to escape even quicker again there. Yeah, yeah. So there's been some great days over the last couple of weeks where we've had kind of some of the easterlies hit in the wall yeah. where some of the waves have gone up probably 10 or 15 feet and great to watch it really. Absolutely. Um, and it's great to see how well the drainage has been working in this area as well. Really well yeah. so, so as soon as a wave comes over and hits the wall, the water pretty much immediately leaves via the, the surface drainage throughout this section. So yeah. when a wave does hit this wall and waves come over the top, the water drains off down into the front of the channel through from, from here and then yeah. from about where I'm stood now drains down through the ramp on section B. Brilliant. You can see a load of people using back using yeah. the beach. So this is probably the highest it's been in terms of sand level for quite a while, really, because we've had an east, we've had it, uh, we had that easterly period, yeah. which pushed all the sand down to this corner, um, which previously was up the top by the yeah. by the breakwater, the by breakwater, Coast Guard's yeah. breakwater. Um, which is why you can't really see many of the units down here. I mean, most of the time that we've been delivering the work, all of these units have been clearly visible and the blocks beneath yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got, we have got large quantities of sand in this corner over here. Um, obviously, we, we can't really stop that doing what no, we're doing. No, no, but it's, sand, it's, sand, it's sand. done it forever, hasn't it? Like, <laughs> before the seawall was here, at the bottom end at Coast Guards, it used to come up over to the lower section, all, all the beach. And then a couple of days later, with, with the wind change, it was another six foot drop again. So yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned in the opening video, this is only a temporary surface running through here. Um, so you can see the lads over this side now putting the granite sets in. The granite sets extend a little bit further to the end of the station building. Um, and where we're stood now gets granite sets put in there as well. Okay. Um, same as before, the grey granite kind of, there's an imprint on the facing panel which kind of replicates where the arches used to be that we covered up on the lower levels. Yeah. Um, and then throughout this section here, this will be concrete surface which you can see we're just using as material storage area while we're building the wall at the moment. Yeah. So we've left the gap in, in there at the minute purely for access in and out of the station platform because the lads are accessing the work area through the station. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're, those will probably be two of the last units we, we install. Um, we've got the tower set up on this side over here, which is getting quite high now. Um, I probably am a little bit scared, too scared of heights to go up on that tower to jump to the <laughs> And that's the final lift on there now. There's just two blocks to flunk on top. Um, the blocks are currently sat down on, on this side of the tower. Oh, yeah. And then all we've got to do in this section, again, is just the surface. And, and there's a little bit of fence in between the two, two units there. As I mentioned, the last two blocks to go in. Right, Jack. Thanks again for another brilliant tour. No worries. You're and welcome. And so tonight, if you're watching this Saturday night, 
What's the date, Saturday night? 17th. 17th, and... yeah. June now, is it? So, yeah. Where's it going? <laughs> it's it's like like... Judgment Day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, see you later, mate. See you later, Luke. So, yeah, give this, give this video a like and a share and subscribe to our channel if you, if you haven't already done so. And hopefully you'll see us installing the bridge later. Thanks for watching.